bag. I just put them on. You know? Stop it. Oh, my stop. wardrobe person just gives them to me and I put them on my body. Well, then what I, need a war- I need a wardrobe person. Yeah. I do too. I got a name for you. She's fantastic. Um, anyway, What's happy name? playoff season. I'm not telling. Happy well, you playoff season. You just said you would season. tell us. <laughs> You're such a liar. What, what game are you most excited for? Uh, I think yeah. I think Phillies Marlins. Honestly, oh no 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 Rays Rangers because good pitching matchup. Okay, Kratz. Scott's not looking. He doesn't get it. I see it. He's on the pod. Scott's on the pod. Of course, it's the Phillies game. I'm so excited to see it is popping around this town, especially with a four no Eagles team. The Phillies fans are. Equally nervous and equally excited. So it's I'm excited for it, especially since it's an eight o'clock game. It'll take about two hours and thirty two minutes since all the new <laughs> speed up rules. I can be under my covers might, in no time. It might take two forty two because yeah, it's the playoffs. A little playoff things drama. could slow down a little bit. If you more, you know, use your timeouts, that whole deal. <laughs> Every hatter has to use a timeout. Who has to use a timeout? Every hitter. Hatter. Well, their timeouts. Hatter, hitter, batter. Also, I was going to say batter, so I combined them. Hatter. Stets <laughs> and hatters. <laughs> mound visits. You got to use your mound visits. Oh, yeah. Mound visits are going to be Just up. a few of those. Well, you know in the Rays in. game, Kyle Snyder goes to the mound like 500 times a game. You can't go 500 I mean, he, times. He still figures out how to break the system. <laughs> oh, yeah. He'll be like, fake an injury, fake a fingernail. I'm coming out again. And he's Even got such a great danger. gait, too. Long legs, huge, like size 17 feet. It looks like his elbows to his hands. That's his feet, and they just like clawed out there. He's the best. Also, how dare you talk about Kyle Snyder like that? I mean, he is doing. He should be making millions of dollars. Kyle Snyder? Yes. Why? Because from the of Tommy what the John. Are from the Tommy to John doctors. No, <laughs> I kid. I kid. I kid. I kid. I kid. I kid. I, kid, I joke with you. No, he look just at the he doesn't make. No, listen, look at the Rays bullpen amazing. this year. Look at who they've lost, and look at how they're still doing. Look at where they're at. No, I agree. No, favorite. listen, he's unbelievable. He's great. Um, he he's one of the best. I mean, he's one of the best. And the race, the race had Hickey, Jim Hickey, forever. Mm-hmm. He left eventually, and they bring in Snyder, and he's been if as good, if not better. So let's jump into it on the front of pitching injuries, and later we'll talk to Ken Rosenthal and Ryan Helsley. Yeah, there he is. Is it weird it's when you stare into day. your own eyes? No. Oh, okay. Good. Pod, podcast crowd today that's going to listen later is going to be like, what the hell is going on in today's <laughs> show? Let's charge the damn mound, powered by Tiza. If you're a dipper and it's nicotine or tobacco, just stop it and look up Tiza Energy. So Big Woo is not pitching in the National League Wild Card Series. We found this out soon after Monday's show. He has a right shoulder injury and... His availability is, quote, up in the air for the remainder of the postseason. He said, looking back, there was a velo drop to Miami, which is, was his last start. That was the one where they clinched, right? Where they won a billion to nothing? I think so, yeah. So my question on that one, side question, was... Why was he pitching? Right. Once, once you see the drop immediately. Nowadays, I mean, there's radars and readings on everything. But anyway, he said, through live BP going into the weekend, right? He didn't do another start. And the ball came out well, but he didn't bounce back when he played catch yesterday, which is then referring to Sunday. He alerted the medical staff immediately. Oof. Eric Kratz has to start. He yeah. hosts Brew Crew territory. He's got the Brewers to win the World Series. Big Wu is a friend of the show and has been with the team for a long time. This is a team that has a chance to make some serious noise, and this sucks. It does suck, and he showed that it sucks. Being very emotional on the podium, I texted him last night that – it, or actually, it was this morning, just how bummed I am for him. And he's like, I'm bummed too. He's like, but hopefully I can get this thing figured out and it'll be gone forever. You know, not not saying how long it's going to take, but it's one of those things. It's like you never want to hear shoulders with pitchers, especially a reoccurring shoulder. Fortunately, it's classified right now as inflammation, but it really hurts the Brewers. It really hurts my World Series prediction from – Yesterday, it's not even 24 hours old. The ink is still wet. But the like the aspect of the Brewers that they do really well, they run, they run prevent super well. It's hard to prevent runs when they're going to face the Dodgers. Easier when they prevent runs against the Diamondbacks because the Diamondbacks can't steal first base. 
That's where their that's where their strengths are. But if you don't have your third starter, you might be able to get through a three game series. You don't have that third starter. Now all of a sudden you're getting into a bullpen that guys are going to see three times. And when you start seeing the same guys, nasty or not nasty, out of the bullpen, it is it is advantage hitter. You saw it in so many different series where guys, Brandon Morrow is pitching five times in one series. At some point, you're going to get to the nastiest guy, whether they're getting tired or not. And with Big Woo out, it's just going to be more on the – on Abner, it's going to be Abner Uribe. It's going to be more on Devin Williams. It's going to be more on Piguero and Hobie Milner. Like that bullpen wasn't going to need to be taxed because these three dudes can go seven innings with eight plus punch outs. Wade Miley. At, Wade um, Miley? Colin Ray? Who's going to be the. I want to know who's going to start the third game. Start the third game? We might have a game two starter like Wade Miley. Or no. when's Freddie Peralta going to Fre- pitch? Freddie Peralta is pitching game two. Freddie might pitch game three if they win game one. So they're going to hold him back. It's yeah. possible. So the chance, really? Yeah. So there's a chance based on, and I'm only just reading based on the stuff I read and watching interviews. There's a chance they go Burns. If Burns goes seven, let's say Burns goes seven, then they either go Uribe, Peguero, and Devin Williams. They have an opportunity to rest two of their four high leverage guys they go miley and then they have that off day that extra off day in there not saying that they're they're punting game seven but if you go zach gallon versus miley then you go freddie p unless you win game two and then freddie p lines up for the first series so they're not just thinking one game at a time they're thinking how do we win the most postseason games and this is where things get super interesting with the playoffs. I just don't understand starters. why you don't pitch your best two guys your first two games. Because, because you worry about a marathon. Yeah, but you better win. And what, okay, let's say Burns loses. You're going to say, hey, we're going to save him for game three. No, 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 no. Yeah. So if they Burns have to loses, win game Freddy's one. Freddie's pitching game two. Okay. Th- this scenario is they win. Burns gives them length. They save Freddie for three, which could also mean a DS. Because no matter what, you got to win two games. So you could look at it and go, oh, we should just put him away in two here. But at the same time, they got to win two regardless. So even if they lost that game two, which is not necessarily in their favor, right? Zach Allen against Freddie Peralta, I would say that's a pretty close matchup. It's not like you're looking at that as a tilt. Mm. Mm-hmm. Why? Because Gallon hasn't pitched well lately? Gallon's pretty damn good, dude. No, no, I'm saying, yeah. right, right, right. So I'm Gallon like, has the edge. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought you were saying, no, you said it was kind of equal. I'm like, eh. I mean, nothing against Freddie, but Gallon is no. – been for two years now he's been legit right so then that's now what look at game three although game three game three you got merrill than, kelly yeah game three merrill kelly against freddie p so it, it gets interesting this is why it's such a shot to them right off the jump yeah that's why kratz already wanted to change his world series pick you know the other thing the diamondbacks are actually a team that struggled against good fastballs like the orioles they, have crushed good fastballs they've been really good on that front the diamondbacks have really struggled there um compared to most teams Guess who's got a great fastball? Freddie P, obviously, but big woo, baby. Oh, my gosh. He could have had a day if he was feeling it. So this is a huge shot to them. It sucks. I mean, the one other thing to think about is the Diamondbacks um, run their asses off. It's the one part of the run prevention that the Brewers are not not great at. No, I was was going through stats this morning. So uh, mostly Contreras and Caratini. 10.4% 10.4% caught stealing. Yeah, but that's on the pitchers a lot. I don't know, both. I'm saying, all right, fine. But third worst in that department. So Who's for their run prevention, that? I don't know. And Arizona's second best <laughs> in overall stolen backs. You mean stealing bases, Arizona's second best. Right. Because yeah, they, they run. They're young, they're athletic, they take advantage. I mean, look at their dudes they have. Carroll, Thomas, I mean, everybody's running. As soon as they get on, it's like they're getting the starters block and mm-hmm. see how fast they can get to second. So. They're, it, it's gonna, there's so many, like, when you start breaking down all these matchups, there's so many like games in between the games in the game, right? Like stolen bases versus can they prevent? But you can't steal first, right? So how do they get to first? And then they're going to try and steal second and third. It's it's all these series are fascinating because like if you look at Texas and Tampa, right? How far can Glass now go? How far can Montgomery go? Because Texas doesn't want to get to their bullpen, right? So you're like, oh man, but then Texas has has owned the Rays like in the trop. So it's like, all right, what do we do? You know, it's it's there's just so many interesting matters. Jay's twins like. 
like Kratzy said, like the Jays could strike out 20 guys a game, right? But the Twins have struck out the most in baseball, but they still scored a ton of runs, hit a lot of homers, right? Won their division. I mean, it's 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 amazing. Miami, Philly, you know, everyone's like, oh, Philly's going to cakewalk them. Miami won the season series. And so you're like, ah, uh, it's just, it's it's crazy how you can dig into the numbers and you can be like, make a case for any side in pretty much every matchup. Yeah, and it's such a short series, too. So, And we're going to talk to Ken Rosenthal. He's ready for us in a sec. So use the promo code FOUL for 20% off your first purchase at TizaEnergy.com. No nicotine, no tobacco um, for those dippers, and also just for an energy boost. It's time for your first poll question. Scan the QR code on the screen or hit up WatchStadium.com slash foul territory. Game you're most locked in on for day one. Which series out of the four? Go pick. We'll show results later on. We'll talk to Ken Rosenthal in a sec about Phil Nevin out as manager of the Angels. But it's Artie's fault. Do you love baseball? Do you love to relax? Do you ever have trouble sleeping or get distracted while studying? If the answers to any of these questions is yes, then you need to try our Diamond Serenity playlist for soothing sleep and relaxation sounds. Use the QR code on your screen to add to your YouTube playlists. And then you can dream of baseball every night of the year. We invite you to take a minute to relax, reset your mind, and enjoy. And now, back to foul territory. What's up, everyone? Back on stadium, Braun, Kratz, Pierzynski, and getting ready for the beginning of the rest of our lives, the MLB playoffs, but also going over the manager carousel, which continues to twirl. What was uh, who? I mean, I love Phil Nevin, but who? I said this was probably going to happen yesterday. Yeah. We all did, kind of. Yeah, we all did, but... I mean, we, this was one of the overs we counted on, right? Yes. Yep. You will not return as Angels manager. And Sam Blum of The Athletic said no word yet on the future of GM Perry Nation, but some other people reported that He was safe, I thought. Yeah, Yeah. I think he's fine. So I I don't think they've, quote, announced it yet, and you just never know what you're going to get. It just depends. Did Artie, you know, wake up grumpy and then decides (laughs) to do something else? I just don't know. You know, that's how our sport operates. We put franchise players in the hands of a helicopter owner who has no idea what he's doing and won't pay for your Starbucks. If you go with him, AJ, if, yes, if since, since Ken's coming on, should we just throw our name in the hat for to be a manager since there's so many openings now? Yeah, let's do it. You don't yeah. have to throw your name in the hat. It's already been thrown. I get DMs sometimes about half the guys that are on this show. Hey, this guy should manage this team. And I usually write back to them. I go, no, <laughs> <They're> <laughs> with us, because <laughs> it's not like it's a front office person. I'm like, leave us alone. I want to see Locaine being a manager. That's the one person on our show. No chance. I want to see Locaine. That's exactly what I want to see. No freaking chance. (laughs) He would quit so fast. He'd go, how's my bank account? All right, I'm out. Yeah. Ken Rosenthal, our FT Senior Insider, with us right now to go over that carousel. 
Uh, Ken, good to see you. Happy postseason. But let's start with the manager carousel. And thank you for the shout out on Fair Territory. You know I don't miss a second of it. We went over our over under one and a half. I told AJ this. So when I asked it, and I, I'm I'm gonna say I was a little soft on this one. I actually asked it, and I think what I first said, like within the week, and then I kind of stretched it out. But I think within the week was fine. We said one and a half, and what? We're at three already. Exactly right. And we've hit the over. We hit the over within 48 hours after you asked me the question. And it's not surprising necessarily. And I know, AJ, you just said that the Nevin thing wasn't necessarily a surprise. But what Scott said is also true, that it's just another reflection of the Moreno ownership. Phil Nevin did a reasonable job for the Angels in that year plus that he was the manager. Players liked him a lot. He connects with players. He's not necessarily soft on players, but he has a good way with them as a former player himself. And again, the question I have for the Angels, as always, is what are you doing? What is your direction? What is your plan? Where are you going with this? And we never get an answer because there is no answer and there is no plan. So the Angels carousel continues to turn. And we'll see how Perry Menagian handles all of this and going forward. But it's a franchise that, as you said, Scott, is run by a helicopter owner. And it seems to continue to spin its wheels and its rotors, I guess, for lack of a better term. So, Ken, my question then is... Phil Nevin, what could he have done better? You lose Mike Trout, you lose Rendon, right. you lose Otani. I mean, he was pretty good, I thought. And listen, you know, and I know, we've done we've done Angels games. Those guys loved him. I did a game yes. last year at the end of the year, and I Mike Trout came out and talked to myself about Phil Nevin and about and Phil. I go, Phil, you know, I'm, I I've no I know Phil on a personal level, so I'm like, Phil, I want to help you, you know, keep this job. Who, who should I talk to? And he goes, How about Trout? And I was like. Oh, hell yeah, because Trout never talks usually to anybody, especially when we come in town. You know, he came out and talked to us, you know, for about everything for like 15 minutes about how much he loves Phil Nevin. And I was like, is there a better endorsement of the Angels organization than Mike Trout and Phil Nevin talking about how – I mean, what else? there's nothing else Phil Nevin could do. That's why with the expiring contract, it just seemed inevitable. I agree. And Trout said the same thing about him a couple of weeks ago. And fans might say, well, what else is he going to say? But you know what? There are ways to say things, and there are ways you can interpret things, and Trout was unequivocal. Most of their players were unequivocal when asked about Phil Nevin. And keep in mind what that franchise went through this year. They were in a good place in about mid-June, I believe it was. And then the injuries hit, one after another. In fact, several on the same day, it seemed. So the injuries hit. Perry Menagian tries to scramble and add some players to the deadline, but it was nothing he could patch effectively. And then, of course, they let those guys go at August 31st before the deadline for postseason rosters being set. So it was a chaotic year for the Angels. Down the stretch, they were keeping guys on the roster who weren't necessarily healthy, but they didn't want to replace them, so they were playing short. All kinds of things went on. Phil Nevin kept his mouth shut, didn't complain, and yet this is his reward. And of the three managerial dismissals so far, I can understand why Kapler is gone. I can understand why Buck Showalter is gone. And yes, I can understand why Phil Nevin is gone. But if you want to tell me or ask me which one is the least justifiable, I would say actually Nevin. And I have a lot of respect for Kapler and Showalter. I'm not saying they necessarily deserve what their fate was. But you can understand why those situations went the way they did. I need to hear an explanation of why Phil Nevin was inadequate for this job. We're not going to hear it. With Artie Moreno being the Artie Moreno that he is, is this the least desirable by far open managerial location? Well, the three right now, yes. And if you ask me about the 30, I don't know that I would put it behind Oakland. <laughs> but at the same time, it's not all that desirable, Eric. And you're right. The problem is that there are only 30 of these jobs. And the people who want to manage they're not necessarily going to be choosy because they understand it's a very limited number of opportunities that they may ever get. And you may never get one. So is it better to be the Angels manager and get fired or never be a manager? Most people would probably say I'd rather take my shot. The thing is, I will say this, the next manager and the next GM after Perry, it's not going to be any different. It's the same song every single time. Guys go in there 
actually, I don't know that every guy goes in there thinking they could change already, but people think, okay, fresh start, we'll try, maybe things will go better. No, it's not going better. It's not happening. Ken, there is, there is one other one that kind of, there's a lot of speculation about, and it's the guy in San Diego. I yes. know he has one year left, I believe, on his contract. And I said this yesterday, they have, him and Farhan Zaidi have a relationship back going back to his Oakland days. Is there any chance that Bob Melvin is the next manager of the Giants? I would say it's not a zero chance. And I don't know what's going to happen in San Diego, whether Preller will survive, whether Melvin will survive, whether neither will survive. But as we wrote in The Athletic a couple of weeks ago, it's an extremely volatile and dysfunctional situation. Something has to give. And I know the owner released a statement yesterday. He loves everybody. Great. The fact is, it's not good over there. And something does have to change. So if Melvin gets fired, would he be a candidate for San Francisco? I would think he would be a candidate for San Francisco. I don't know that that's the way Farhan Zaidi wants to go. But at the same time, it's something that you would have to consider. Because Bob Melvin is a highly competent professional manager. Never had a problem until he got to San Diego, right? So I don't know that it will happen. I don't know that Melvin, like Buck Showalter, wants to keep going. Buck Showalter has said, yes, I want to keep going. I don't know that Melvin will feel the same way after this experience. Maybe he will, maybe he won't. But at the same time, yes, something is going to be different there next year. I feel pretty confident saying that. All right, let's take it to the playoffs. Are the Jays still paper tigers? <laughs> Ken's words? <laughs> Those are my words, and I wrote those words after they got swept at home in four games by Texas and got hammered in mid-September. Now, of course, when you write something like that, you realize you could get bit, and I got bit. But at the same time, the Jays all season long have been a tease. They have a roster that you look at the position player group and say, wow, these guys should hit. Two years ago, it led the majors in homers. This year, they were middle of the pack. It's inexplicable what has happened to them offensively, but as they go into this series against Minnesota, their front three might be as good as any, right? Gossman, Bassett, Barrios. Then you look at their bullpen, a bunch of high leverage guys or guys who can pitch in high leverage. Someone mentioned to me, another executive from another team said they might have the best combination of rotation and bullpen in the entire postseason. So all they have to do is hit. The problem is that's been the case the whole season. And they really haven't hit consistently. So that series to me, Blue Jays Twins, is the most interesting of the four. And the Twins, of course, have a lot to prove as well. The 18 straight losses in the postseason, all these things that have gone against them. But they have quite a dynamic young position player group right now to go with Correa and Max Kepler and some of the others that have been there. And I'm interested to see how they play this out because their rotation is also very good, and their bullpen is also very good. So this could be a really good series. Do we make too much out of the fact that, you know, 18 straight games they've lost in the playoffs? Who cares? This, nobody's been on this team. Like, it's like saying, ah, oh, the Packers have this in the history of the NFL against the Chiefs. Like, do we make too much out of that? Maybe, but, Eric, it's part of their history, at least their recent history, and it's undeniable. Now, most of the guys on the team – if not all of them, were not around for even the last loss. So from that perspective, they don't care. They weren't part of it. It's not their problem. But it is part of who they are. They have not been a team that has won playoff games in the past two decades. Now, 13 of those 18 losses were to the Yankees. The Yankees are nowhere to be found this October, which is good news for the Twins. But again, I believe they're capable of not only of winning a game in this series, I believe they're capable of winning multiple series if they can survive here and get going. I picked him, Ken. So I picked him to win this series against, against Kratz's best wishes, which he also picked the Brewers to win the World Series. So I feel good. Uh, before yesterday. the Woodruff news. Before the Woodruff news. It doesn't <laughs> well, matter. Before the Woodruff news, there. different story. Here nor there, but... Are the Astros about to punk the AL again, Ken? Are they? Just... Are, you, are you? That sounds like plagiarism. I, I read I'm reading that, that exactly off because because it's such a good line that I know Ken didn't write. <laughs> so I mean, are they about to punk the AL again, Ken? <laughs> what you think he has a ghostwriter? Maybe. Is I it... wish AJ. I wish I had a ghostwriter. No, I wrote the line. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? 
actually, I do believe that they are capable of doing that because of what happened over the weekend and really their last road trip in general. They go into the final weekend. This bears repeating. They're two and a half out. What they needed to happen happened. Rangers lose three or four in Seattle. Astros sweep the Diamondbacks in Arizona. It showed me again that this team is a team of championship medal. We've seen that over the years. Forget the scandal for a second, just of who they have become post-scandal. They're still this experienced, battle-tested group, and you got to knock out the champ. It's kind of like that. I don't know that anyone will. Their starting pitching might be coming together. We'll see beyond Verlander and Valdez, if Javier and Okidi can be as good as they were in the last week. I'm not convinced of it, but this is a fine offensive team. We know that. This is a good defensive team, and they have a way. So right now, in my view, they're the team to beat in the American League because none of these other clubs have their experience in the postseason or their savvy. So we'll see. Go ahead, Kratz. I know. Oh, you're I thought I thought you had one more, AJ. My bad. The uh, Jordan. Ma- <laughs> what do you have a ghost talker? Ghost. I have a ghost talker. Somebody. Somebody talks for me because of face. I wish. I wish like James Patterson would ghost write for Ken. That'd be awesome. Brad Thor, someone like that. Ken's better than all of them. Go ahead, Kratz. Tom Clancy. Yeah. They can't write for you. Yeah. I don't so know you really. you had touched on Jordan Montgomery, how he's game one starter. Yeah. This guy is. Had an unbelievable year. I think he should get some Cy Young votes. It's going to be difficult because he was in two different leagues. Is he looking? I'm talking more contract than playoffs right now. Should he be looking at a contract that's similar to Rodon? Well, some of the stats line up similarly. And Jordan Montgomery is entering free agency a year older than Rodon was. And the stats I'm talking about, not strikeout rate. Rodon better in that regard. Montgomery actually below average in terms of strikeouts. But when you look at ERA plus the adjusted ERA to the ballpark in the league, they're comparable. And a comparable number of innings, again, as the two of them entered free agency. You have to look at it from that lens. I don't know that he'll get what Rodon got, but will he be over $100 million? I expect that he will. And he has, since leaving the Yankees, really blossomed into a frontline starter. Now, I know he's only starting game one, perhaps because Scherzer is down and DeGrom is down. But if you guys remember, what I wrote about is that when the Yankees traded him in 2022 at the deadline, their rationale or part of their rationale was, we don't believe he will crack our postseason rotation. And he might not have on merit at that time. But... Jordan Montgomery is starting game one right now for the Texas Rangers, and the Yankees are nowhere to be found, as I said. So it's a good outcome for him. And he said to me, they knew. The Yankees knew I would be this guy because they knew how hard I worked. But it took him leaving there for all of this to happen for him. And good for him. He's done a great job. And again, for the Yankees, it did not work out because Harrison Bader did not prove exactly what they thought he could be, even though he had that great postseason last year. But again, Jordan Montgomery, he's pitched extremely well for the Rangers as he pitched extremely well for the Cardinals, and he is going to do well in free agency. And I do think, even though he's in a good spot now, he's one of those guys, Ken, where if he performs really well in the playoffs, especially if the Rangers pull off a series win here and he gives two, three brilliant starts in the playoffs, he could make significantly more. You know, I, I know I, I agree, owners Scott. are paying more attention. You know, the guys that make those decisions, they're paying more attention right now in yes. these clutch spots. So and Aaron we'll Nola, he does. I know I've written, yeah. I've written about Aaron Nola too in kind of the same vein. Aaron Nola has a lot at stake in this postseason because he's had a rocky regular season. His ERA is up around four and a half. If he has a good postseason, it seems to me teams will be willing to forget in free agency what happened in the regular season because he's still that guy. If he does not, then people will wonder, okay, is he in decline? Where is he at? So, yes, the postseason does matter. It creates a strong impression for players who are about to enter free agency. Ken, of the four buy teams, Houston, L.A., Atlanta, Baltimore, who's the most vulnerable in the first round. And lastly, I haven't seen your World Series pick yet, so I want to hear why you're <laughs> picking the Phillies or the Orioles because you love them both. Well, I'm picking different teams and different outlets kind of covering my butt. But <laughs> 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 I would say the most vulnerable Orioles. 
roles. And I only say that because of their lack of experience on this stage and because the other teams just have been there more. That's not really a great reason because the Orioles have played so well this year and they've overcome everything you could possibly overcome. They've done well in the AL East. They've done well when faced with their only two four-game losing streaks. They've held off and fought off every challenge. I just worry about their bullpen a little bit without Bautista. I like where the rotation is right now because Bradish and Rodriguez were two of the best pitchers in the American League in the second half, and John Means coming off Tom's surgery looks really good. But I just want to see it all transpire for them. It's not a knock on them at all. It's just, if you're asking me, are they more vulnerable than the Braves, the Dodgers, and the Astros? Just based on their experience, I would say that might be the case. Now, as for my World Series pick, what I wrote today in The Athletic, listen, I'm always wrong. I literally never get it right. So what I did today was pick two teams where the fan bases have given me a hard time over the years trying to ensure that their teams wouldn't win. It was said in jest. It was all in good fun. But I picked the (laughs) Orioles because I worked in Baltimore for 14 years, 1987 to 2000, left the Baltimore Sun in 2000 for the Sporting News at the time. So I've been gone from Baltimore almost a quarter of a century. I don't like to admit that, but it's true. And their fans are still upset with me because, oh, they think I hate the team. No, I don't hate your team. Now, the Phillies, their fans have a better beef because I wrote last year that they shouldn't fire Joe Girardi. Obviously, that was wrong. But even after I apologized in print and on, I believe, this show, maybe fair to I don't I've apologized all over the place. I still hear it. So Phillies, Orioles, that's my World Series. And guess what? Now both teams are doomed. No doubt, but you're the biggest homer I've ever heard. <laughs> you're taking over. You're getting into Eric Kratz homerism now, right? I mean, holy cow, like the Orioles because their fan base is mad at me and the Phillies because the fan base is mad at me. I mean, you, you've changed. Now, I can't wait because you just said also, uh, you also just said the Orioles are the most vulnerable team. So I want to make sure Brandon Hyde and Bradish and Gibson and Aaron Hicks and all these guys – when you walk into that clubhouse, because you're doing the Orioles series starting on Saturday, they all know that Ken Rosenthal said the Orioles are going to lose. So, boys, Orioles, get them. <laughs> First of all, the Orioles seem to thrive off of that kind of thing. If you remember, it, when they won the division, Brandon Hyde pointed to the preseason projections and said, hey, nobody picked us, which is true. So, if anything, they should be thanking me for – saying they were vulnerable, and they should not be thanking me for picking them to be in the World Series. But really, guys, Eric, AJ, you guys know this. All of the things that get written, all of the predictions, all the projections, it doesn't matter. What matters is what happens on the field, and what happens on the field doesn't often match what people think is going to happen, and that is the beauty of the game. It's why we all love it so much and why we all keep coming back. All right, so this is a good way to finish before we promo fair territory because i don't know if aj caught this yet do you know oh, who no. the dork of the, oh he knows you know who the dork of the week was this week uh it was the guy in oakland wasn't it no that was the dork of that's the, year. the dork of the year i don't know wow, who the dork of the week is dork of the week you're looking at him bottom right corner of your ken screen. rosenthal ken called himself out for i'll let him explain it True I guess, words are never spoken and, and you can catch the whole story in <laughs> at length in in fair territory, but my follow-up question was, Ken, was there anything that you could have done? Like, even if you were getting motioned off, do you cut off your report? Your reports are like a minute. It's not like they're super long. Like, are you supposed to stop after 10 seconds and say, just kidding, guys? Like, I'm kind of goofy like that. I might do that. I've probably done that on MLB when back when I was there. Like, just kidding. I'm getting pushed off the field. Got to go. But what would you have done? All right, it's a bit of a long story, but A.J. would have loved it if he was there. He probably would have been talking about it for all nine innings. So what happened was before certain games, certainly all playoff games, I do what we call a pregame or pre-first pitch hit. So I'm on the field talking right before first pitch. And usually it's timed so I'm done and the first pitch happens and everything's sequenced perfectly. In this case, something happened that was – out of my control, but I am standing on the field in Seattle Saturday, giving my hit. It was 30 seconds, Scott. It's never a minute. And as I'm talking, I'm hearing the crowd getting restless. Now, the field is behind me. The guys are behind me, the players. 
And I'm hearing the crowd starting to boo, and I keep talking because there's nothing I can do. The camera is on me. They didn't take it off me. So obviously people booed because I was delaying the game, delayed it by a few seconds. Everybody was looking at me in the entire park. Great feeling to have. And when I asked what happened, I was told that the umpire, Trip Gibson, did not pick up on a cue from the stage manager. He was just looking at me. I guess that's the truth. But regardless, on fair territory, because I upset the people of Seattle and certain players, although the players thought this was hilarious, I made myself dork of the week. And the other thing that happened, AJ, you would have loved this even more. So about the fourth or fifth inning, the cameraman for the video board at T-Mobile Park comes by and says, hey, Ken, we're going to put you on the video board. This is a Fox game. We're excited to have you guys. I said, nah, they're probably going to boo again. He says, no, we don't boo in Seattle. I'm like, nah, it's not good. Well, they put me on the video board. They booed again. Julio Rodriguez runs on the field laughing. But, hey, live TV things happen. Ken, I'm so mad because, you know, I didn't get to see that because I was doing the other game, <laughs> right? But, I mean, the umpires are told before the game because we had the same thing happen at our game, except we don't have a sideline reporter. So, you know, it was – they were booing me because – no, I'm just kidding. They would never. <laughs> but, no, but honestly, we are doing the open. So we do an open before the game, and, and we normally do it live. But this time we taped it. And so right when they go to me for my open comments, they gave Gunnar Henderson the Oriole Player of the Year – so the crowd went crazy. And so in my ear, our producer, Carol Langley, was like, do you hear him cheering for your open? Like, that's got to give you energy. <laughs> it was like the greatest timing ever. But, I, I mean, you got to blame Aaron Stoikoff for putting you in that situation. That's that why. The producer? That's the well, producer. Aaron, Aaron's the producer, but I don't blame him. And, AJ, you know this. It's part of the magic of, I guess, being on live television. Things will happen. Usually things like that, when they happen, are not good. But... You have to be prepared for them. And Scott, I never considered stopping, even though I knew something was up, because in my head, I have to give that report. And if I ab abort it in the middle, it just would be kind of weird. So I did it, and they booed, and life went on. Good thing Angel Hernandez wasn't the umpire. He would have kicked you out for delaying the game. <laughs> <laughs> and then I would have thrown my also, helmet into the stands. Yeah, exactly. You got fined $5,000. He would throw his mic instead of dropping it. But... Also, everybody relax. Probably many of the same people that were in the stands that didn't want to pitch clock, and now everything has to be on the clock. Otherwise, they freak out. 30 seconds well, of their life. All right. I, I, actually, Scott, if I'm a fan and I'm watching a reporter on the field talking when Luis Castillo is standing out there for the biggest game of the year waiting to pitch, I, I might have booed myself because it's kind of a ridiculous situation. At the same time, Hold on, wait, Scott Service is calling. Wait, what? Oh, it was Rosenthal. Yes, it was terrible. It was Rosenthal. He was well, terrible. That was their season. Lost, didn't make the playoffs. I forgot oh, okay. about Thanks, that. Thanks, Scott. He had five walks. I watched. Oh, he was game. awful. He was terrible. You it was never know. Castillo's been so good. So, you're right. Now they're going to blame you. You're going to hear from <laughs> Seattle fans forever. Uh, Ken, enjoy the postseason. The the whole uh, wild card madness we got the next few days, and we'll talk to you later this week. Sounds great, guys. Thanks. Thank you. Fair Territory up there now. Fresh episode giving you a very, very in-depth preview of the playoffs. Be right back on FT Live talking umpires and attendance. Got in the box and I, I looked at the catcher. I said, hey, what's this guy got? And he goes, dude, he's, he's firm. I'm like, all right. Cool. So I'm like, all right, I'm going to cheat like crazy here yep. and get out in front and maybe um, gain one foul if I have to. And yeah. uh, I saw the first one. I'm like, I wasn't ready for that. That was, I was a little bit more firm than I was ready for. And I think it was a ball, though. I think it was outside. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it was outside. But that's all right. That's beside the point. Umpiring's hard. No problems. No problem. But – um but I, I did. I, I do feel like I missed one pitch that he gave me to hit. Other than that, he, the last pitch I swung and missed that it was you know probably a ball down, but it it just exploded. And you know AJ, them shadows are no joke, man. Those are tough. tough oh, so, we're, so now we're using yeah, umpires and shadows. Yeah. Oh, no excuses. Man. Oh, no excuses. Oh, wow. No excuses. Wow. No excuses. Well, at least just facts. Just out. facts. At least you didn't go Joey Votto and get kicked out of your last game. So way to go. <laughs> well, all right. So. I had I actually had several players want me to because I've never been tossed at any level. And uh, 
and it, although I, I did try to one time, I, I was as mean as I could be, and I still didn't get tossed out. Um, but uh, I did have several guys going, the only thing you've not done is get tossed out. you got to get tossed out. Joey just got tossed out. Go get tossed out. I'm like, dude, I'm not – I'm not going out like that, man. That wouldn't that wouldn't be right. But no, you should have got tossed to the, after the first pitch because you were hitting, and then whoever and then whoever came in after you would have had to wear your strikeout, so your stats would have stayed the same, right? Yeah, yeah, I yeah. know, I know. You know, if I was hitting 199 or two 201, I might have done that, AJ. I might have done that. Okay. And now back to foul territory. FT Live, hot corner time as we wrap up the 2023 regular season, get ready for the postseason. We do have some numbers to crunch, and let's let it sizzle. MLB umpires, this according to Codify Baseball, missed over 21,000 balls and strikes, calls, ball and strike calls, during the 2023 regular season. It was their best season ever. Listen, I mean, I, uh, it's easy to dunk. It's I e know. Okay, but here's the thing: like, is a ball this far off the plate, and they call it a strike, right? Or you know what I'm saying? Like, you, I you, do know what you're the saying. The technology has gotten so much better to where they can now see what's a ball and a strike so much better. But it was also their best season ever, so they deserve credit for getting. I know the twenty one thousand. They deserve credit. This was truly their best season ever, their lowest miss rate of all time. Way to go, umpires. I mean, way to go. You guys are working. You got listen, as a player, all you ever cared about was the guy won. He cared and he was consistent. Now, if you if he was always calling away, you'd get a report and say, Hey, listen, this guy has a big strike zone. He usually calls it away. So you'd go up there and be like, Okay, I gotta look away. And he'd call and you're like, ah, crap. Okay, he's gonna call it away again. So you gotta look out over the plate, right? But as long as they're consistent with it. I mean, you guys played, so I, I just am I wrong, Kratz? You just wanted the guy to be consistent. But Kratz, see, for me, the, it's not the numbers, you know, like oh, they're ninety whatever percent right. Like, cool, that's fine. It's just that, like, in a big spot, right, when they make a blatant miss, it's so brutal. <laughs> it's brutal, but I know how Scott's looking at it. Scott's looking at we could fix this. It could be zero. It could be zero mistakes, and they're not there yet, or else we would have it. They're not there. They don't – they – I think if you really delve into this, you really delve into what robo-umpires without a challenge system is going to look like, it's going to – the offense is going to crater the first year because I think there's going to be spots that hitters are like, what? That touched the zone? And teams are going to exploit that because they can. It's within the rules. So we can't go from 21,000 down to zero mistakes because the machine is not ready yet. And I love, I, love the, I love the challenge system. I love that part of it just so we get it right. And it eliminates what you just said, Scott, like a big situation. We just can't get it wrong in a big situation. But every pitch is a big situation. AJ knows this. Like you, you, miss, a, you miss a 1 1 pitch, it makes it a 1 2. Or a two-one count, like there's a huge swing in production and batting average in those in those counts in those swings. T two things on what he just said. Well, before we show this, oh, it, it's there. Batter suffering the most called strikes on pitches out of the zone during the 2023 regular season. Rutschman, Bregman, Reynolds, Betts, Rosarena, Paredes, and Seiya Suzuki. Take it for what it is. Yeah, I mean, whatever. They all I mean, play. A couple of guys at the too. top have good eyes. Yeah, they exactly. play a lot. They have good eyes. Right. Yeah. The counting stats get tough for me. Yeah. But, okay, so two things in what Crouch just said. One, if you want to go automatic strike zone, you better learn how to hit a curving ball because <laughs> they're going to start throwing those big Rick Sutcliffe curving balls that boo, 
poof, and fall right on top cool. of the Those plate. Those are awesome to watch. But like Ephus pitches because Great. I'm serious because like if you can throw a super slow curveball, all it's got to do is touch the front of the plate. Just right? And if it just nicks the front of the plate, and it can almost land. It can be coming straight down and boom, hit the front of the plate as long as it ticks your knee. Ha! Love it. Great. Then learn to adjust to those. These are professional hitters. They will figure out how to hit that pitch. And my answer to what Kratz was saying is, yes, they might find a cheat code, a little glitch in the system that pitchers will try to exploit, but it's a game of adjustments. The hitters will go, hey, there's that one spot. We got to figure it out. That's like a hole in my swing or a hole in the strike zone right now. For me, it's all worth it. And yes, I agree. It's not there yet. It sounds like it'll be there, not for 2024, but for 2025. Because, I mean, we can get into it another time. But, like, they're looking to take your batting stance over a time period and make that the strike zone, how many big leaguers are going to bitch and go, oh, I change mine every week. That You can't do that, right? So there's still shit to figure out. I get that. Here's what I can't stand. So then guys are going to start squatting down for like two years, and then when the strike zone comes, they're going to stand up, and it's going to be like, oh. Not even two years. You can do it after a few months. <laughs> or there's going to be mean, a guy that stands all the way up, and then he squats down, and they're going to be calling pitches over his head strikes. Like, good, see, this, good luck, this doesn't though. work. Good luck. And then the other, hold on. When you're done crying and whining and moaning, Kratz, the more arguments I got in with umpires, after they would miss a call like 1-1 one, one or 0-2 oh, and it'd be 1-2 and a guy would get a hit, and I'd be like, that's your fucking fault, asshole. Because – Right, so you want it for – Because they changed the count. So you can tell guys that they're wrong. I would where, tell them anyways that they're wrong, even what? when they were right. What are you going to do, yell at, yell at the computer? And Manfred said well, no, I'm not, I don't like play anymore. Bombs. I don't care anymore. I, I know, but Kratz, my point is, you know, a pitch that's three feet outside um, – I'm exaggerating, but like enough. It, it's just like the replay system where I always remember who was it? Todd Helton at first. He fakely caught it where he was like eight feet away from the bag and they oh. called the out. Do you remember that that famous oh, yeah. play? That was brutal. And I was like, that needs to be shown forever oh, to Andres anybody Sc- that ever says why. Andres Galrog. Andres Galrog is the old right, Jim Joyce, one of the great guys, too. Of all, I'm going to say this. I had an umpire. I'm not going to use his name, but he's everyone would know his name if I told you. When the replay first came out, he told me, I said, hey, how do you like replay? What do you think of this replay thing? He goes, huh, it's great. I don't even have to try on the bases anymore. They'll clean up all my mistakes. I mean, that is not the and right attitude to have as an umpire. That is insane. Who is that? Totally. I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> and that's the thing. And that's the thing. The guy that you said, that's exactly what you said at the beginning. Like, you just want somebody that shows they care. Just the other day when I told that story about the day game in Oakland and a Sunday night ESPN game in Chicago, you want them to care. And that is why they, they will do a great job if they care. I'm more a proponent of penalty system, like a you got to do well or you're getting shipped out. C and triple I agree. By the way, it was Armando Galarraga, just not Andres Galarraga. He didn't throw any perfect. Oh, right. Andres Galarraga was <laughs> – he was a good hitter. <laughs> big cat. He was the big cat. It's all right, dude. We have your back. We, we always have you. We got you. I'm kidding. I'm saying to you. Like, if you say a name wrong, we just laid you yeah. out to dry and didn't even help you out. That no. wasn't me. It was Kratz. I, I said, I I said it, and then, I, and then I, oh, I tried to help him it. out. Oh, I, I tried to help him out yeah. and, said, and, and agree with me. <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh, yeah, Andre Scalaraga. Absolutely. Yeah, I am. <laughs> We're great teammates. But then, you know, our producer gets in our ear and is like, it's not Andre. It's <laughs> Armando. Let's get to our picks for tonight. Swinging back, including your FT heater. Lock it in. Mm. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Man, good question. I don't. I, I'm not entirely sure what the overall end is, of that is going to be, or where that's headed. But I do know that uh, I have so much fun playing. And the other day to play. And, and by the way, just let me tell you about that guitar you see right there. Goldie gave me that the day before. That's a custom Garth Brooks guitar that Garth sent him for for a gift for me, a retirement gift. So I played it. Uh, that was just. Uh, incredible night to be able to sing my own stuff in front of in front of a a sold out bush stadium crowd um you know i thought i was going to be unbelievably nervous but it turns out i was comfortable right there at bush stadium and this is my home you know so um but uh, i do love i do love to play and sing i love to write even more than all that um i've got an album coming out and uh i've got some people interested in 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 wanting to you know, make this thing real big. So I, I just got to be, I got to make sure I'm, first of all, first and foremost, good husband, good dad. I've been gone for a long, 
long time. You know, I'm not hopping back on a tour bus to go on, you know, 80 tour or 80 stop tour. Um, but uh, we'll see, man. I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to uh, put a limit on it or, or, or put an expectation on it because I have no expectation. I just know I'm having fun. I'm working with incredible people and we're doing pretty good stuff. Okay. So two years ago, two years ago, we're in Houston and we, we know AJ dinner. didn't pay. Well, no, <laughs> no chance. And by the way, way more than me. He deserves to pay. He owes it as friendship dues. But we go to the we go to the steak restaurant. They have A five Wagyu on the on the menu. And Adam's, I think his, I think Jenny was there too, his wife. And we're sitting there, and he's like, he's like whispering to her. And then we're like, Wayne, is everything okay? And he's like, I just really want to order the A five Wagyu. Is that okay? And we're like, dude, of course it's okay. Like order whatever you want. It's like pre pre series thing. And he's like, are you guys sure it's like a lot of money? And our producer, Aaron Stoikoff, looks at him and goes, dude, we'll expense it. Order whatever you want. He's like, <laughs> I'm two. Jenny will have one. I'm going to have the best bottle of wine. Do, 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 do. And then it, like six people ended up ordering it all because Wayno wanted it. And now back to foul territory. All right, let's hit poll results. So the series that people are most looking forward to is pretty close. It keeps going back and forth between Toronto, Minnesota, and Miami, Philly. Toronto, Minnesota takes the lead, then Miami, Philly takes the lead. So those are worlds ahead of uh, third place, Texas, Tampa Bay, and then a last place, Arizona, Milwaukee, getting absolutely no attention. That's why they're the early games. (laughs) Small market. You know, Milwaukee's the smallest market. By far. Yeah. By far. And they, but they, they put a quality team out there every year, and they have a big fan base. I mean, they're listen, their fans are rabid. When they – when they I mean, you go there, they're great. Yeah, they get to tailgate, and also they have a park that has a roof that closes, which uh, makes sense forever. Sort of. What? Sort of. What do you mean sort it, of? It leaks. Yeah, I know, but, like, you can – play games there year round and that matters. No, you're right. Anyway, let's do our BetMGM locks and first introduce you to our foul territory heater. Every Tuesday, we boost and we talk through it. And here comes AJ to bitch about what our decision was. But we went with the Marlins Phillies game this evening. If you go into the BetMGM app and you choose the FT heater, Phillies to win, Bryson Stott to record one plus total base. That just means one hit, one single, and that gets the job done. It is at plus 135. It is now boosted to plus 165. So, you know, 100 to win 165 or whatever the max is that they let you go. But that's a nice little promo boost for game one. It is, except Lazardo's pitching. He's lefty. Bryson Stott hits lefty. I mean, I don't know. Oh, yeah. Listen, he's, you guys, he's only three for four on the season against him. That's okay. I know. He just keeps, he he keeps throwing hit. fastballs, and he keeps just hitting base hits to left. And then he threw him a breaking ball, double down the line. There's that. Okay, well, I'm just going to say this, that you guys, for once, I'm happy you guys did try to include me on this. We did. <laughs> you did. So I'm proud of you guys. But at the same time, I'm like, well, I picked the Marlins to win the series, so I can't really get on the heater line. And this is why you haven't been included <laughs> in the past. We, so, and this is important. You're an antagonist. Right? boost. No, yeah. I'm not. I had parody picked before you guys did the booster. I know, but we do our boosts as a unit. Um, and well, a our, unit, you and Kratz. Right, right. The successful unit. And now we have AJ involved, but of course, AJ doesn't agree with us. So we voted and decided that he is off the island for this week and we're still going <laughs> with them. So anyway, that's my lock. Kratz, what's yours? My uh, lock is I'm picking on the twins punch outs. I'm going Gosman, six punch outs, six plus punch outs. And I'm also going Gosman, something I haven't done all year, two walks. This year he has faced them, and he walked four, and he had walked five. The Twins are really big into one zone. They see the ball there, and they let it go. There are going to be a lot of freezes at the bottom of the zone with that heater, and then they're going to lay off a lot of splitters down. So, Okay, well, I'm going uh, Tampa Bay, Montgomery, and Glass now. Tampa Bay, Texas, Montgomery, 4Ks. I think he can do that against Tampa Bay. And Glassnell strikes out everybody. The Rangers, heavy right-handed. 
So seven Ks for him. It doesn't matter for him, righty, lefty. So that gets me to plus 130. I feel pretty good about that. Number. Nice. Mm. Okay. There you I go. Like Everyone plus money today with their locks. So um, there is also a little bonus bet action to get your stake back in the playoffs if you log in to your existing account. This is not for new users. I mean, it can be, but also if you're on the BetMGM app, you can get your bet insurance token. Um, add an, a postseason bet. In the in Major League Baseball, activate the token, see full terms and conditions for more details. And if that wager doesn't win, you get your stake back. Review the terms and conditions, though, um, for the amount of stake back that's coming your way. Gambling problem or concern? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Okay, so hour number two of FT Live on the Foul Territory YouTube channel will feature our dude, Ryan Helsley. And this will be, I mean, I guess technically our, our second conversation with a player after the regular season. So I like to see how these conversations go because we've talked to guys during the year. Now, Elsie gets to kick back and just do whatever the hell he wants, right? Um, so we'll talk to him about <laughs> Wayno's finish and his finish to the season um, coming up next in hour number two and more playoff previewing. FT Live, Ryan Helsley of the St. Louis Cardinals coming your way pretty soon here on the show as we continue to wrap up the regular season and look ahead to the postseason. So let's get to a few other hot corner topics right off the jump here. Braun Pierzynski and Kratz with you today. So playoff tickets vary immensely in pricing. Uh, our boy Bob Nightingale said, there is a drastic interest in ticket prices during the MLB wildcard rounds. I'm going to dispute that based on what he just put below that. Um, the Marlins Phillies game, game one, is the most expensive wildcard game by 503%. Get in prices for game one as of Monday were $199 to just get in. Rangers raise $33. d Brewers, $22. It is $7 to get into the Blue Jays, Twins game. I find that hard to believe. Where are we at as a sport? See, to me, that's that's kind of concerning. But like, I feel that it's hard what? to believe because $7? I mean, that's obviously general admission, like standing room probably only, but still, 7 <laughs> bucks. I mean, you can at least get a 20 spot for that, can't you? I'm going to check out, I'm not going to name any names, but I'm going to check out some ticketing sites Okay. Um, and see how much it costs right now to get into Twins Blue Jays if I wanted to go go to the game. They make you stand in front of, behind a pillar. Like, that's like, you, you have standing room only, but they make you obstruct your view. There are like, no pillars in that target field, though. The target no. field is nice. They did a great job of that. They place. did a great job. They really did. But seven bucks? If you're in Minnesota and you're like, man, like our team has less wins than the other team that we're playing and we still have a home game, you got to get out there. Unless it's snowing, you, you should be out there. Seven bucks? Come on. Listen, the Twins Let's fans go. pack it in. That's not – yeah. It's real. I mean, I'm on a ticketing site right now, Section 334, 326, all these spots. So single seats? digits. $9. And that's just on one. I'm sure you can find a couple bucks less. Seriously? 
Single well, the digits first to get set, in. Man. 334, how, row seven. Like, how, that's are their a real tickets, how are their tickets, like, uh, first of all, available? I mean, I know these are secondary ticket yeah, sites, yeah. but still, seven dollars $9? Like, that just, that's ridiculous. But, Honestly, but, I'm, I'm embarrassed. But there's series. I'm there's series sports. that there's series that it's not the stadium's oh, not completely filled. Like we had, we were talking to Juan Pierre the other day, and he was talking about how the year they won the World Series in '03, said the first series there was whole sections upper deck that weren't filled. Like yeah, that was the Marlins. I I'm, I get it, but Mar I mean, are, is Minnesota that much more? You know. Larger market. I know they to, come and watch you talk games. talk to Juan P, by the way? Hey, Juan P's a guy. I can't give away yeah, my... It's a legend's territory. It out. is a legend's yeah, territory. Okay. Why not? You're not included on all of that. How do I not get in on that one? I mean, I played with that dude for like five years. Did he Did he no, buy you a suit? Not. Oh, hell no. Yeah, exactly. Oh, right. He bought you a suit? Oh, my gosh. Hell yeah. I bought him an ice cream because he had 12 of them a day. We still had an eight-pack. Loved it. Anyway. that I, with a gift. I just think Hold it's, up. yeah. I want to I want to bring this in. So, Ryan Helsley of the St. Louis Cardinals joining us right now. And first off, Ryan, congrats on um, finishing up the 2023 season, dude. Uh, good to see you. But, you know, I like to carry the combos right into our guests that are on with us frequently. So, dude, I don't know if you heard, but, like, we're going over some ticket prices. I mean, it's, it's a couple hundred bucks or more to just get into Phillies Marlins tonight. But are you surprised when you hear like Blue Jays twins you can get in the building in the section 300s for single digit dollars? Like that's cool to be able to afford it. But also for me, like personally, I'm a little bit embarrassed as a sport where like that wouldn't happen in basketball and football. Yeah, that's crazy. You know, I mean, nine bucks. I feel like the fans got to take advantage of that. I mean, like you said, you'd think playoffs, the uh, ticket prices would be astronomical. Um, so Hopefully they're just trying to fill that place up and create a better environment for the game. All right, I got, I got another on the playoff front. So when the bracket comes out, okay, and I looked at the times, I was so excited because they have done this in the past. I was like, here we go. We're going to get like a 1 o'clock, a 3.30, a 6, and an 8.30, something like that, right? You know, because we can go on two and a half-ish hour intervals. Yeah, if one's like kind of finishing up or an extras, okay. But we could be like – March Madness for two, three days, and we're not getting that. Do you wish that it was that way versus two games at the same time, essentially, two games at the same time, essentially, for your viewing experience because you're a baseball fan? Yeah, it would be nice, you know, to get to watch majority of all the games instead of having to pick one. Um, you know, I don't know what the reasoning is behind that, but uh, it would be nice, you know, to get to catch, you know, because the best time of the year for baseball, so to be able to catch majority of the games I think would be better. Which one are you catching? Which one are you most interested of the four series? Do you wanna do you wanna watch? Honestly, I don't know. I mean, really, I don't even know who's playing who. To be quite honest with you, I kind of checked out there for a little bit uh, the last couple of days. Um, I don't know. I mean, I think it's, there's going to be some great matchups. I think Texas and uh, the Rays. You know, I know quite a few guys on both those teams, so I might be tuning into that one. Okay, so then since you don't know who's going to win the World Series. I feel like it's so hard to pick against Atlanta, man. They've just clicked on all cylinders from day one. Um, I think them, I, th I think you can never count the Rays out. Their pitching is always great. And they're obviously started the year out winning 20 something games. So if they catch fire like that again, I mean, once you get in the playoffs, you never know what's going to happen. So, I mean, you just got to get in. And I think that's what makes it so exciting. So, okay. Do you root for a team? Because I, I remember when I was playing, I didn't really root for teams. I kind of rooted for players. Do you root for a team because you're still playing, or do you root for players you know, or do you root yeah. for organization? I mean, I mean, how do you go about watching this without just, you know, because sometimes you get annoyed. You're like, damn it, I don't want that team to win because I don't like that dude. I don't want him to get a <laughs> ring, right? Or, oh, I'm really happy for this guy because he's going to get one. It's, it's such a hard thing when you're still active. Yeah, I think it would be cool to see Texas win. You know, we got a couple guys that got traded over there, or, you know, Toronto. We had a couple guys go there, too. Um, yeah, mostly just the guys that are with us in the clubhouse this year. Hopefully they can make a deep run. You know, it'd be cool to, you know, see them, you know, get to play in a World Series. Did you send a text to Monty, Jordan Montgomery, your former teammate? Good luck, dude. No, Go get him. Yeah, no. I haven't yet. He's been pitching great. I've talked to Stratton a little more than him, talked to Hicks a little bit. Um, but he's been pitching great. You know, they've got a great staff down there and, you know, they got a great offense, too. I think Texas is a, a could be a sleeper to win it, too. 
By the way, if you text Monty, would he respond with like, who is this? Because after we had him on the other day, we had him on the other day. There was a couple questions. Like, I think he didn't remember Kratz. I mean, it was, it was, he remembers there was a Kratz. couple times where he's like, wait, who am I talking to again? Stop it. No, he should. He's, he's pretty cool about it. He should remember. Okay. All right. Just, you Dude, know, Monty's remember? a gem. Oh, he was unbelievable. By the way, you, you missed this, AJ, but we had, we had Ryan Klesko on the other day. I'm just going to say it, Kratz. Oh, yeah. He thought, he thought Kratz was me. AJ a couple times. <laughs> Which is unbelievable because I've known Klesko forever. Yeah, well. When I was with the Braves, he would see think. me every day. Mm-hmm. I mean, there was a lot There was a lot going on with Klesko. He was yeah, on was for like he was PG. He had the big – he was in the car. He had these big glasses on, and he was like, yeah, you know, AJ, when we're – you know, when we were hitting home runs and stuff like that, and AJ – and then you hear in the background, you hear, turn left at the stop sign. Like, it was, <laughs> it was, it was a lot going on. He's holding on, uh, he's holding on to the oh crap bar, too. He's like, he's holding on as tight as he can. His wife is, I assume his wife is driving. It was, there's a lot going on. So a, I appreciate yeah, it. Was was like, yeah. Yeah, uh, totally. Ryan, do you have a teammate who is most likely to mess up someone's name? That currently plays with me, or either one, either, either one. Either. Um, mess up a teammate's name. Uh, I or don't anybody know. like in the org where he's like, "Yo, what's up, Bob?" And it's like, "Yo, that's not Bob. That's Mike." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's actually a funny story. He might get mad that I say this, but when Arenado came over in 21, he was calling one of our clubbies the wrong name for like half the year, and that was that was pretty hilarious because I just found out about that like a month ago. <laughs> what was he what was he calling him was it close i, I don't he... remember I, I wish i did remember but uh i don't remember what he was calling him it was just was not his name and the guy just ran with it and he's like how am i gonna say something no one or not you know he just knew that's what he called him so <laughs> you okay. guys should have said to, no one like stopped arenado or told the clubby eventually like dude just go up to him and be like yo nolan you're you're the man but it's mike not john no no they did it didn't go on for very long but it, you know when he first got there he was calling you know something else and they're like dude that's not his name and then he, he felt terrible obviously and he was like my bad and the club he just laughed about it. he's like it's all good so there's a way to but, fix that extra well a lot of the teams <laughs> have the news. clubhouse names on the shirt now yeah. Especially in the visiting clubhouse, they have the – like Tampa. You go to Tampa, oh, they visiting, have, like, yeah. the name on the shirt. Yeah, visiting. No. So we used to – when I had Juan Uribe, we had Juan Uribe and Octavio Dotel oh. on the team. Nick Swisher calls them both on the bus one night to the front. He goes, we're going to play a game. Name oh, yeah. that teammate. Yep. It was the funniest thing I've ever seen because they didn't know any of them. <laughs> and Uribe had been with us for, like, four or five years at this point. Yep. And Dotel was new. But – they're like, Rebe, who's that? And he's like, he only knew numbers. He's like, that's 42. <laughs> and we're like, what? And he's like, uh, did it, like Mark Burley. He's like, Bailey, that's Bailey, Bailey. How did he address anyone on the team? Like if he had to Poppy. say something. Poppy. 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 Okay, but you say Poppy, half the freaking clubhouse looks up. No? That's the that's why it was so funny. And then you oh got Dotel who didn't know anybody. <laughs> I mean, he, like Canerco, he'd be like, that's King, that's King, King. Because he couldn't say Canerco, King, King. Oh, well, that's different. He couldn't say the name, but did he know? There's, no, there's but then there was like, there was literally. Guys where he didn't know. We went name. guy by guy, and there was a 25 guys. There was about 10. And he's like, I, both of them. No idea what their names are. Wow. It was great. You know everybody's name, right, Ryan? On the team? Or the clubhouse? Or beyond that, in the org, everywhere. No, like yeah. everybody, like if we played that game with the Cardinals organization. Would you be good? Yeah, I, d- I definitely try to know everybody's name, you know, have more of a personal relationship and knowing them and, you know, just treating them like a normal human being. You know, we're just normal guys like them. And I feel like it's important to, you know, build that relationship because they help everything go smoothly too. So it's uh, I think it's important to know everybody's name. So one name that unfortunately you're not going to be able to um, address as much starting next year is Adam Wainwright. So um what was that like for you? We had Wayno on yesterday for a while, and we went over his experience. What about from your experience? Like, you've been on the team for several years. You've been around Wayno. Like, did you get emotional? Did you shed a tear? Did you just have a lot of fun with it? Were you one of the guys that told him to get kicked out of the game, like Joey Votto style? Because he said some teammates came up to him and said that. Um, yeah, I mean, just so many emotions. You know, obviously, no one coming into this year, you knew it was going to be his last year. And, um, 
he didn't have the year he wanted to, obviously. And, you know, everybody wanted him to get to 200 wins really bad and all thankful that he was able to do that and, you know, pitch through some pain, obviously. And um, I think the moment that got me the most was when probably the same one that got him, I think he talked about it, was when Yachty and Albert walked out because nobody knew Yachty was coming. Um, and the crowd just erupted. It was, a, it was a pretty cool feeling just to be there and to be able to share that moment with everybody there. And you know how much they meant to each other. And, you know, they played together their whole careers. And that was a really special moment to be a part of. Was that was there anybody that was like, I'm not going to the ceremony? I don't really know Wayne Wright. I don't need to go. No, you probably get kicked off the team if you just said something <laughs> like that. <laughs> you might not ever show up in Bush Stadium ever again. Somebody's looking to get traded, maybe? Yeah. If you don't want to be in St. Louis, you might do something like that. That's oh, really cool. That's all. That was. I think that was after he won his 200th game. Yeah. Yeah. That was uh, awesome. He, you know, I'm just happy again because he would have been Mr. 199. I know he you would have been all over him because he's. Him. Yeah. You, you, well, you know, and you have actually the unique connection, Ryan, where you've spent a decent amount of time now this year um, talking to the guy sitting next to me, and you've been around Wayno a lot. Those two are back at it together as the dynamic duo with Adam and me and calling the playoff series coming up so um any advice for aj based on wayno this year anything because aj was so pumped i mean jokingly but to call him mr 199 and then he pulled off 200 and wayno told him yesterday like oh mr 200 sounds good you could call me that so (laughs) you got any juice for aj to spit back at wayno coming up this weekend uh, I mean, if, if you're into fantasy football, you can definitely talk some smack about it. That'll get under his skin. He's he's crazy about fantasy football uh, or any, any golf golf stuff. He takes that pretty seriously too. Um, other than that, that's that's about it. I think I think you guys are gonna kill it. I'm excited to listen to him talk. Cause I know he's been excited about doing it when he did it. Maybe it was last year, or the year before, whenever he did it. But he's he's talked about it a good bit about how he's looking forward to that and how he just loves the game of baseball and um, you know he can't wait to you know move on to the next chapter. Anybody yeah, we've done it. We've oh, go, go ahead, Crouchy. Oh, no, I was no. gonna say we've done it twice now together. This will be our third time, Ryan. So he's 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 a he's a grizzled veteran at this point of the broadcasting <laughs> booth. Okay, and now he's a former player. Now so he's he a former really player, go. so now he can really open up and tell all those juicy stories exactly. about all of you guys. So watch out. I'm gonna see. Like, I'm gonna be like, hey, you got any Ryan Helsley stories you can tell us? About? <laughs> They'll probably have something he wants to share. Who knows? That guy. That guy's <laughs> Hey, what do you uh, – you ever hear at the end of the season, you ever hear, oh, yeah, now I get to pick my own friends. You ever hear that in the clubhouse? No, but, I mean, it is. it was weird this year. You know, every year I've been in the big leagues, we've made the playoffs, and this was the first year we knew when our season was going to end. And an hour after the game, the clubhouse was empty. It was pretty surreal, you know, to just have it end so abruptly. Even though we knew it was coming, you know, it's – still not a good feeling, you know, to know that it's over. And, you know, you only have so much time in this game and trying to be the best you can be every day. So a um, little bittersweet, but, you know, on the silver lining of things, get to spend some time with family and, you know, hopefully get after this off season and maybe get back in the postseason next year. So we said maybe. Do you guys have the team or do you guys need a lot of additions to get back to the postseason? And what do you need to do in the off season? to help your team get back to the postseason or for you to have a better year than you did this year? Yeah, I mean, it was it was a weird year. You know, we started out, you know, winning a couple games and losing a few games. You know, it was just we couldn't ever get on the, the right foot or the right path. And, um, you know, we have a lot of guys that have pitched in the postseason, played in the postseason. And so I think, you know, we have some experience there, but I definitely think we're going to have to add something to it. You know, that's above my pay grade. I don't really know what they see wanting to add but uh yeah just myself I think just being healthy you know I mean being out there and being available for the team and you know helping get get outs whenever they need me I think you know is something I need to be available for and um you know glad I was able to come back the last month and pitch well down the stretch and you know go into the offseason feeling good hey Ryan uh two things one we just showed video of you pitching man for a guy that throws 102 you throw a lot of damn sliders but that's besides the point. A lot of, a lot of strikeouts on those. Slides. Welcome to 2020. I mean, dude, he's throwing a hundred. He throws like one. It's 103, and then it's like we, 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 we. Okay, whatever, whatever works. But that's okay. What do you do the first, let's say, two weeks of the off season? Do you decompress? Do you not talk about baseball? Do you watch? Because when I was playing, I watched every playoff game. Like I said, but I mean, a lot of guys just get away. Don't want to know what's happening. Do you just go away, spend time with the family? What, what's your routine like for the off season? 
I'm sure I'll watch more this year just because we had so many guys get traded away, you know, and you're rooting for them. And, you know, like out in Arizona, Gallon, you know, I was pretty good friends with him in the minor leagues. And, you know, this is their first playoff appearance and I don't know how long, but, you know, he's had a great year. So it'll be fun to watch him compete too in the playoffs. I think for the first time, I might be wrong, but um, it'll be cool to see him out there and that young team go at it. And yeah, just for me, you know, I like to hunt and fish. I like to kind of get away from the um, hustle and bustle of the city. So I like to go home and, you know, get out in the woods and just, you know, just kind of live life and decompress. And, you know, I'll start working out relatively soon. You know, I like to work out. I like being in the gym. So I'll probably start doing some stuff next week and just take this week off and um, get back in there next week. But throwing wise, I'll probably take a few weeks off and, you know, pick back up in November. So, Ryan, some people will say, I don't have any regrets about anything in the past because I'm good where I'm at right now. Sure. But at the same time, obviously, you wish you were playing playoff baseball. So is there one moment that if you could switch it around from this past season, you would like one game that sticks out where you're like, damn, we had that game and we got got screwed on a call or we just lost on a bad bounce, whatever, or one moment in the season. If you just think back, I'm giving you the option to just like turn around a little bit of fate. What would you do? You know, there was a stretch. I forgot when it was. We swept Boston and then beat L.A. at home like three out of four or something. You know, I think I felt like that was, all right, we're going to start rolling, you know. But for whatever reason, we just – we didn't, you know. And, you know, obviously I got hurt in early June, and we played a little under 500 baseball the rest of the year. Um, I think early on, though, like first season against Toronto – might have been the opening game of the year. Uh, we ended up losing the game, but it was like 11 to 9 or 11 to 10, you know, just a crazy game. And um, early on, we just got beat by, you know, a lot of balls that found the hole. And it was just tough. I felt like losing those games just kind of deflates your team. And, you know, being in the back end of the bullpen, you just feel like it's, you know, all on your shoulders when you lose the game, obviously. And there's just moments early in the season where, you know, whether it's the seventh, eighth, or ninth, you know, we lost some close games that maybe could have propelled us and, got us moving um but for whatever reason you know we just we didn't do it um do you go ha ha cubs because they were rival and they were in it to the finish and they collapsed like right you now can't, you can't really ask him this because as a player wow. he's going to give you but listen if he wants but to continue rival. but if he wants to continue to be a cardinal for a long time he's got to say yes because if he says no i was I was really rooting for them. They're going to be like, yep, you're getting traded to Oakland. <laughs> Here, I'll, I'll rephrase it, okay? I, you're not paying attention to the Cubs situation because you're focused on yourself and, and the Cardinals. I'm just saying, like, let's, <laughs> I'm going to paint the scenario, okay? And Wayno comes into the clubhouse and goes, no shit. The Cubs just blew it, and they, they're out of the freaking postseason picture. After all that, they were comfortably in the spot going after the NL Central division. Like, where would your – happiness meter be like if it's right here right it's just like you're you're just chilling like does it go like this a little bit does it go like that like where are we here yeah um, I honestly didn't know what their deal was I knew they were winning but and then I saw a stat I think when they were in Miami or no Atlanta um that they had lost like 12 out of 17 or something down the stretch and you know they had a they had a good lineup and a good team and you know they they didn't make really any moves at the trade deadline because they felt like they had a chance to push for it. And, um, yeah, just to see them. I mean, that's part of baseball. You've all, you've all been around baseball and you just, you just never know it's day by day. And to see them kind of do that, you know, I mean, they could say the same thing about us this year, you know, at the beginning of the season, we were probably picked to win the division and make a playoff run, but here we are. Yeah. You know, the Cubs, the Cubs rivalry, you hate the Cubs. It's okay. You don't have, don't, (laughs) don't do anything. Don't say a word. If you don't like the Cubs. I understand. Yep, that's great. <laughs> would you rather, if you knew the end, if you knew the end of the season this year, would you rather have had the Cardinals' path or the Cubs' path? Knowing you weren't going to make it, would you rather be super close or would you rather be where you guys were? I don't know. I'm, I don't know. I've never really thought about it that way. I mean, I feel like we've always played – I heard Wayno say it before in like his 18 years or whatever – this was like the earliest he's not played meaningful games, which was like, you know, mid September, I think out of all the years, this was the only year, like maybe down to like the last day that they weren't playing meaningful games. So I think, you know, in that aspect that they were playing meaningful, meaningful games right down to the end, you know, that means a lot of guys probably would have better seasons. So yeah, I'll probably, probably say the Cubs, you know, in it to the, to the very end, like obviously that heart breaks a, 
a little more, you know, thinking you're going to have a chance at the playoffs and, you know, all of a sudden the wheels kind of fall off, so to speak. And, um, you know, it just didn't go their way. Give me one thing this off season that you're looking forward to doing. It could be something that you've got on the calendar. Cause I know the guys will start to plan like the precious moments that you have where you're not committed to a schedule. So is there a trip um, or is there just like a situation at home? Like, Hey, I can't want wait to binge watch a series. Uh, honestly, yeah. Just spending time with my daughter, you know, I miss a lot of family time, you know, on the road and traveling a lot um, uh, during the season. So just getting to spend time with her and, you know, just going through everyday life with her and my wife. I think that's going to be fun. Um, yeah, we're going to take a trip to Colorado at some point. I think we're going to go up in the mountains, just hang out for like four or five days and just kind of kick back and relax and decompress a little bit. So that, that'll be fun as well. Hey, Ryan, yesterday. does your wife – oh, sorry, Crutch. I was going to say, does your wife, when you got done with the season, was she just like here? Like this? She was just like here and just dropped her baby and was like, now it's your turn. Out the door. Yeah, basically. Gone. She's like, I'll, I'll handle it during the season, you know, for eight months, but the off season's mine. You know, you're, you're getting up and – Helping her if she needs something in the middle of the night. So it's, it's my turn now. She's like, girls trip to Miami. Let's go. <laughs> Ryan's got the baby. <laughs> hey, last night, Wayno posted on Twitter that he was watching that he was watching Field of Dreams as like, like the first night after he quit playing. Retired, quit, whatever it is. But you think that was a good move by him or is it a bad move? He posed the question to Twitter. Should he have watched that movie right away or is it like – you know, he's already – he's coming out of the corn now. He's not hes not the one hitting hitting the ground balls. Uh, this, this might be like a baseball sim, but I've never actually even watched that movie, so I don't know really what goes on there. Um, so I don't, I don't really know uh, how to answer that question. <laughs> okay. Next question. Okay, Ryan, they make fun yeah. of me for not seeing the Sandlot, so don't feel bad. They, they make not fun of me for never seeing the Sandlot. We're good on the Sandlot. Yeah, I've never seen that one. So they make fun of me all the time. Don't worry. Now it's just a thing for you, AJ. Now it's just a thing that you've never seen it. Like, you've seen no, every other refused. baseball movie. Now I just refuse to watch it. What, yeah. what were the Field of Dreams games, though? You had the White Sox and... Yankees. 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 Tim Anderson. And then yeah. the second... There was that one was the other Apex. Or, or, uh, Reds, Cubs. Oh, well, Cubs? It was, it was Cubs. It was okay. Cubs, Reds. So Cardinals, have, I was going to say, so you're off the hook for now, but when Field of Dreams does come back, if you guys are in it, are you going to watch it before or whatever? You're just going to play. Yeah, I feel like I have to now. You know, I can't I can't go there and not know what's going on. So put it on your list for this offseason. Long yeah. toss. I want to I want to know who do you throw with? Who the heck out in Oklahoma is like, yeah, you throw 105. <laughs> I'll get back there. So my first yeah, like my seven thoughts. off seasons, I uh, worked out at home by myself. And my pitching coach was the head coach at my D2. So I would actually play catch with him every day um, just because, you know, kids are in class all day and I really had nobody else to play catch with. So he would actually play catch with me, um, but he got a different job. He, he moved on, and so I don't really know anybody there anymore. So I've actually worked out at the University of Arkansas last year where there's a few guys um, that play pro ball, and that, that was a great setup. You know, they have great facilities, and that was, that was an awesome experience last year. That's cool. Yeah, you got to go to school. All right. Um, <laughs> what? I don't. It, no, I'm saying like he's got to find people to throw yeah. with. It's a big league. Yeah, but it's player. not just like you finding he something. Go, like he can like go to his local high school and be like, yeah. "Hey, dude, no. catch this bully real quick." <laughs> he can't. No. Oh, he can't. That's what I'm saying. No, it takes a little work. This is a real job. He would um, break all right, somebody. so let's finish with this, Ryan. We've been waiting to to play with you since uh, the season ended here. Um, didn't want to bother you during the season. Have you played Immaculate Grid? No, never. I've seen it, but I don't. I'm the worst with names, so I'm going to be terrible at it. <laughs> Perfect. Can't wait. Right, like great. We're about to do Here it. Here we go. We got a few minutes. <laughs> Ready to the good news, though. <laughs> I love that. It's like, hey, have you ever played? Nope, and I'm tell terrible. Terrible Perfect. names. Well, <laughs> welcome. Pick Ryan, up. here's the good news, though. This is a great way to play the game because you've got some friends to help you, and it's not just us two. Sometimes we'll get the foul territory live chat going at the same time, and they'll th throw some names at us. So the way we like to okay. do this is, and we, we're going to put five minutes on the clock. We'll let you look at the columns first. So okay. it's Astros at the top, 300 career hitter for uh, batting and, what, 500-plus 
career home runs. And then the left columns, Braves, Dodgers, Yankees, you got to crisscross them and find some players. And you tell us some names and you don't have to worry about if it's super rare or not. Like we want to hear if you've got guys, we'll try and stop you if it's someone that we think is wrong. And then yeah. if you're like, yo, I need help on most of these, then we're here for you. Yeah, I might, I might need help. All right. The first one, I, I know Will Smith, right? The lefty reliever, the first one. Mm -hmm. Yep. Astros and Braves. All right, that it's a good works. start. And we start the clock here. We know oh, that's a which dub. One, though? Oh, pick the right Will Smith. No, yep. Bottom one. Ryan, bottom left. Yankees Astros. Mm. Yankees Man. Astros. You, you know good job, you know? right? Oh, yeah, You're so good right. at this already. Pull it in. Help me out. Look at the screen. Look at the screen. He already <laughs> yeah, said Kratz. it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. There we go. Eric, oh, one. Look at you. Point one. one. That is fantastic. Look at that beard. LA dude. and Houston. Now, technically, I'm a, I'm a career 300 hitter with the Yankees, but I don't think that's what they mean. <laughs> <laughs> oh, LA and Houston. Man, I, those teams love each other. Yeah. I have no idea, honestly. 300 career average. 500 homers. That's uh, what A Rod worked for that one. Yeah, he um, would. A Rod yep. would. Scott refuses to put him on the screen, though. Me? Not me. AJ I'm has a boy crush on A Rod. Oh, I love him. I love him. High percentage. But it doesn't <laughs> That's okay. I mean, there's not many choices. 500. Yeah, 500. Tough. A lot. 500 to a lot. Let's run through that. You got a Dodger for us with 500? Um, I feel like I should, but I do not. How about Eddie Murray? Let's do it. Murray. I didn't go chef, but Murray's probably better. 14. 14. Are, you, are you guys good at Those this? Those numbers like, are always going to be high. Got this down? We're kind of mid at it. Mm, yeah, yeah, we're we've, mid. we've played with a lot of – between Kratz and I, Ryan, we've played with a lot of, like, people. So we have a lot of yeah names that we can throw out there. It's a vast network. Yeah. They're, they're old. They've played a while. Does Freddie Freeman, Freeman count? Does he have 300 career average, L.A.? I don't know. He's got to be close, right? Who? He definitely does. Freddie Freeman? Freddie Freeman's got a 300 career average. He has to. Has to, right? Okay. Freddie Freeman. Let's try it. If we're wrong, we're wrong. But if it's wrong, we'll blame Freddie. Oh, yeah. 26. Here, I'm going to give you one. Freddy. I'm going to get – here, Ryan, I'm going to give you one just because it's funny. Will Omen, 300 career average, Braves. Okay. Do you have to qualify? Will, Will Omen. Will, Will put that out on Twitter, I think. That's exactly yeah. why I'm using yep. it. Look. Point zero four percent. There we go. <laughs> legend. It was like was one for three or something. No, they changed it because after all the complaining I did, they, they changed yep, all the yep. things. No, Yankees uh, three hundred career average. I don't know. Was, Jake Powers was Jeter three hundred. <laughs> Jake Powers. Yes, he was. Uh, Jeter did. Yeah, I think he was like three yes, nine. Jeter, yes. he finished. All right, so that's going to be like that's there. going to be like seventy eight percent. That's all right. Jeter would want to be up there with yeah. A Rod. So yeah, next to we'll each put, other and Kratz. Let's put Jeter. Yeah. Oh, Kratz, Jeter, A Rod. This is how it works. <laughs> Kratz, Jeter, A Rod. Just Yankee legends. Legends. All right, L A. Oh. and Houston. All right, we have some suggestions. Yeah, right. for L A. Houston. I'll give you a couple suggestions. Kenny in the chat said Jake Marisnik, and Jackson in the chat said Zach Granke. I like Jake Marisnik. I feel like that one's going to be low. Jake Marisnik. White Sox great, too. 2%. Oh, in a White Sox nice. hat. Nice. In a White Sox hat. Look Good at him hit. go. Good Look hit. at the hair oh, on yeah, me and the hair on him. Been moving. 500 for Atlanta. Um, I mean, Hank Aaron. Hank Aaron, Eddie Mack. Hank Aaron, yeah. Which one you want? Might as well, yeah. Hank Aaron so so and you want. And who else? Just, got, is, there like a, is there like a random? Sheffield. Sheffield. Chef? Chef was a brave. Let's do, yeah. Let's try to get a low one. Chef? Okay. Chef, Chef, Chef was every one of those teams. True. You're right. He was. Chef also has on his golf Ashes, bag 511 homers. Just Does he really? Does he? Mm -hmm. I'm going to get my golf bag. AJ, buy me a golf bag that says 31 <laughs> career home runs. No, they asked me. They asked me if I wanted that on my golf bag, and I was like, "Yeah, no." When Ryan Helsley retires in ten years, we're going to send him a golf bag and it has a number of saves. Four hundred eighty saves or some shit. Yeah, there you yeah, go. There you go. That'd be sick. All right, Ryan, did you enjoy that? That wasn't that yeah, bad, that was, right? Yeah, that was, that was good. I need to practice. You were good at it, though. 
Yeah, yeah you were bad at all. You had you nailed it. Yeah, you did well. You did, <laughs> hey, we 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 played. We're starting to do this with a lot of the players to play along on Immaculate Grid. You are by far not the worst. Let's put it okay, that way. I'll, I'll take that. Yes. You, knew, you knew your teammates and ex-teammates' names, so yes. you were ahead of the game. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Somebody thought the Immaculate Grid was printed out somewhere. Was that the, at the Met Stadium? They would it print it out, out on Mets. paper. <laughs> who told? Who that was Rowdy. Rowdy told us that. Rowdy, Rowdy said that. Mets that printed that, out. Did you play at City Field this year? Were you? I, I were you was. Hurt I was hurt when playing? they went. I was hurt. hurt. Oh, God dang it. Well, look out for it next year. I know it's really important to you, but apparently the Mets printed out on something called paper, <laughs> and they handed out to the players. The pterodactyl <laughs> flew it in. Yes, exactly. Well, Ryan, dude, great catching up with you. Um, yep. Enjoy the off season. We'll catch you a little bit later on in the off season and, and relax, kick back, and good luck to your boy Monty tonight. Sounds good. Appreciate y'all. Y'all have a good one. You too. Thank you, Ryan Helsley of the St. Louis Cardinals. I he like was good. That. He was good at it. It was good, yeah. yeah. And also, it's cool. Some of these guys haven't played ever, and it's really become a force during the season. So some dudes are busy. Some clubhouses, it takes over, like Yankees, and others, you know, are not really playing. Yeah, so. Will Omen, yeah. That's tremendous. It's not cheating. I mean, what? You're not allowed to look at Twitter? I mean, Well, no, he put it out on Twitter that he's like, if you ever yeah. need me, I'm a 300 career hitter. That's and cool. no one remembers Will Omen because he was a lefty reliever. That's cool. I like that. All right, let's get back to the postseason conversation as we are very close to games beginning. And I'm so excited. We are going to look ahead. I am so excited too. I'm we have so playoff rosters out. I mean, the one that stood out to me Jared Lorenzen? Michael Lorenzen? Not Jared. Pillsbury throw boy. Pillsbury throw boy. The the huge dude on the Hefty Lefty. He was fun to watch. Michael Lorenzen, um, acquired by the Philadelphia Phillies. And dealt a no hitter and looked fire. His changeup was but nasty. But he was a bad after that. So I, I think we talked about this for a sec last time. What, what is the story? Did he just run out of gas? Because he threw 120. He's been a reliever, pitches, didn't he? In that game. And yeah, but I'm not talking about that game. But I'm he kind of know what I'm saying though. Is after that game though, he kind of he kind of regressed a little bit. I think. Right, Crouchy? Am I wrong? Yeah. You're Mr. Philly guy. No, you're 100 percent right. He just, you know, a lot of his pitches were up. He didn't quite have that late life on his pitches, his changeup. His changeup actually, when they moved him to the pen, started to play a little bit better, got into some higher leverage games. And then, you know, down the stretch, he was he was useful out of the pen. But you're looking at it, three game series. Taiwan Walker's probably gonna get moved to the pen. You're probably gonna throw Ranger in. I think it would have been different had you had to set your you had to set your uh, roster for wild card and the NLDS, and I think he could be back on the roster for the NLDS. But you know, he's the odd man out. They're probably going with more of a you know even even Ranger. I don't know that I don't know what his length is, but they already have enough length in either Taiwan. Going game three or Ranger going game three? I haven't I haven't heard, but I'm assuming it's Ranger, and the other one will go to the pen. So you just want more relievers in that case. Oh, rocking the Joe Johan Santana jersey. Uh, yeah. Also, just to finish up on Lorenzen, 153 innings by far career high for him too. Just okay. so everyone knows, he hasn't been over even at the 100 mark since 2015, his rookie year. Anyway, um, Pablo Lopez entering the ballpark today in a Johan Santana jersey. And the short shorts. Are those compression shorts? Don't be jealous because he has smaller clothes than you. Well, his clothes don't fit. You guys don't give him shit. Well, because he's a nice fella. Don't okay. mess with the Johan. <laughs> Do you, I'm pretty sure, though, Johan Santana was on the mound the last time they you know, lost was in the game. The last time they won. Was he? The last time the Twins won a playoff 2004? game. It was 2004. Game one? They've, won, they've lost 18 games Was that since. game one against the Yankees? I don't know. I know in I know in two thousand three when we wanted to beat the Yankees, it was it was who was it? It might have been Johan too. Let's ask Stat Boy. Stat Boy? Oh, we don't have him. Johan <laughs> Johan in two thousand three we beat the Yankees in game one and we lost the next three. And he was I think he started that game. Two thousand two, I know he gave it up. Adam Kennedy hit his third homer off of him. In the so that's yeah. that shows. That shows that the twins what I said earlier, they're watching. 
Oh, trust me, they know that 0 and 18. I guarantee you, they might. There's oh, that we weren't on this team. Listen, I promise you that that has been brought up by the media, not by the organization, but by the media. They they're aware. They push they push that narrative. I just think it's like, so what? Like that has no bearing on what we've done this year. But it, okay, so when they met last minute the playoffs, what was it two years ago? They said the same thing, and guess what they did? They lost three more games and went home, or two more games and went home. So. Then it's just like, oh, the narrative doesn't matter. We got it. We're a new group against the Yankees. Uh, two and out, see you, wild card, whatever it was, whenever they lost. So, I mean, as much as you want to push, it doesn't matter until you end it. And then you got to win a series because they haven't also won a series since 2002. I mean, over 20 years. So, until you end those, what, just end it and then it all goes away. But if you don't end it, it just keeps piling on and on and on. I keep saying I was the last catcher to win a playoff series with the Twins. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, you know love it. I, and I picked the twins. I kind of got to, now I got to root against them. You love yeah, it. You, you love it. Right? No, I picked the twins. Oh, you picked the twins. AJ is yeah, the, I, AJ is the Miami Dolphins. I'm the 72 Dolphins. Pop yep. the champagne when they lose. Yep. Two nothing <laughs> in the DS. Santana, seven innings, nine hits, five Ks. And they won. Game. Yeah, and they won. Um, by the way, one more, uh, little quickie here on the Rangers. Um, apparently, GM Chris Young said the following, quote, I'm very disappointed in the lack of professionalism of the Houston journalists for putting that out there. It's classless and it's not appropriate. and It's completely fabricated. It's wrong. That's talking about the Rangers partying too hard. Yep. I guess some media put that out there for Saturday. And it, it, did he say that? Yeah, he did. Well, he said, he said, he said, oh, well, I guess it, it shows that the Astros having a little bit more of a subdued celebration really paid off where the Rangers went out and partied. And that's what I was talking about yesterday. Evan Grant was like, this is a false statement. He, he tweeted back at him that this is false. They did, they did very little partying. Like after they partied the in the clubhouse though. Also partying. I mean, I don't like, I think that's going a little too hard. Like to me, that's a little sensitive. Like he can't say that. They se also they should celebrate. They made the fucking playoffs. The Astros were like, "Nah, we make the playoffs every year. We're making a division here." It's not about how much alcohol was consumed. Trust they didn't me, lose. there's they been didn't plenty lose of games won of by they people. They didn't lose because of that. They lost because they lost. Right. I hate. I hate this. I hate this narrative. I hate the excuses. And have you have you guys ever had a drink and the next day played ball well? <laughs> I mean, I've had a drink the same day and played ball well. Okay. So. <laughs> <laughs> had a drink during the game. There we go. I know there's, quote, hangover games, although most of the time the hangover games are the B lineup. It doesn't have to do with, oh, the player had yeah. five drinks the night before. Yeah, but, so, yeah. Yeah, it's it was bad. It was bad. Um, I don't – I think it's cool that, that CY stood up and stood up for his team. But I also think it was due to that – reporting. McTaggarty, who wasn't even there – reported something that was false. When you, right. when when you have someone there, there with a right. clicker, okay, they've had 47 Yeah, but beers. I don't feel – The like Astros have had 12. You They're guys are win. taking this too, like, literal in my mind. He's not, like, breaking news. The Rangers had five beers, and the Astros' average beer was one. You know what I'm saying? Like, he's just like, oh, they partied. They celebrated that they won um, a playoff spot. They clinched a playoff spot. Like, okay, cool. Like, let him say that. That's fine. And guess what? It is true. The Astros did nothing in the clubhouse. I'm not saying it affects the games at all. It's more just like how they looked at their current state in the game, which is true. The Astros definitely were a very subdued celebration compared to any team yeah. that clinched a playoff spot. They just but did a little have, champagne toast. It didn't go into the win or loss the next day. I understand, but like, okay, I don't know. I I'm feel against like going a little too hard on this. I'm again, I'm against the subdued champagne toast. I go back to 2018. Joe Madden, who is very, very, you know, he's very scripted. He knows exactly milestones that are coming up. They never celebrated making the playoffs the year that we were we were neck and neck with them. They made the playoffs. We made the playoffs. I think like a day or two later, we celebrated like rock stars. Then they never celebrated, ended up tying them in the regular season. They go to game, we go to game 163, lose. So we celebrated in their house. The Rockies come in, lose in overtime. Cubs never celebrated that season. And I think that is, it's different for veterans who have been in postseasons. I get it. You don't have to go hard. 
But that there might be somebody on that team that never makes the playoffs and never again in their entire career. To me, you celebrate it every time like it's going to be your last. Yeah. 100% agree. I'm good with that. Hey, let's slap hands. <laughs>
it's the same size. My hat, my head size doesn't change. I was a high school <laughs> yeah, kid with right? the same size head. Are you on the last buckle? Two. <laughs> <laughs> when you do the last one, it's like everyone. I'm gonna miss my flight. Happy postseason, everyone. I'm going to LA. I'm gonna be doing the show from LA. Reporting from Dodgers. Playoffs, Stadium. thank you, Jesus. See ya on Wednesday.